Hello, LifeSite News. This is Louis Kanufke reporting from Washington, D.C. Across the street from the Capitol, we're at the District Courthouse uh, with Judge Colleen Collar Cottley, who just pronounced sentence for the several of the D.C. the, the D.C. nine pro-lifers, uh, who took part in a traditional pro-life rescue at the late-term abortion clinic run by Cesare Santangelo. Um, We've witnessed some incredible uh, ongoing persecution of these pro-lifers, uh, both yesterday and today. Um, and I just want to highlight for uh, everyone who's listening in uh, a few things that have struck me over the course of the sentencing. Um, yesterday, we had a very eloquent defense from John Hinshaw, who gave a kind of uh, St. Thomas More statement in which he called the judge herself uh, to, to judgment before God. And he asked that God would accept his acceptance of whatever sentence she was about to pronounce in expiation for her guilt in pronouncing such a sentence while ignoring the blood of the unborn. And so John Hinshaw is being held in the Alexandria Detention Center. Um, he has been in correspondence with LifeSite News. I have enjoyed uh, reporting and passing on the articles that he has sent us. Uh, we also saw today an egregious affront to Jean Marshall, who is a 74-year-old woman um, who has been in need of hip surgery for the past nine months. When she was brought to trial in September, uh, she had a hip surgery that was scheduled. And today in the courtroom, we witnessed the, the, the gross neglect that both the DOJ and the judge herself have been guilty of. Uh, the DOJ thought that no documentation had been provided to the court regarding the, the health issues that Jean Marshall brought up in her statement to the court today. And to the contrary, her lawyer pulled up then and there the letter that her own doctor had sent to the judge um, dated September 14th, the day before um, her, the verdict was pronounced last fall. And it was addressed to the judge detailing her condition and his recommendation for uh, a hip replacement. Um, this was scheduled uh, just after the trial, but had to be canceled because of her immediate incarcer incarceration, which was unexpected at the time. Um, this surgery has gone um, denied for the past nine months, and her condition has only worsened, as she has made known to this journalist for LifeSite News. Um, her condition currently is such that uh, she is in continual pain, she can't take pain medication in jail because of a, a condition for reflux uh, from which her own father died. So it's a serious condition. And while she has been in jail, she, was, she had a belt that was supposed to keep her hips even when she was taken into custody. That was taken away from her because it, it included metal. Um, she has also told me in our correspondence that most recently um, in her right leg, uh, she was unable to bend her knee. Um, her right leg had gone numb and she was dragging her, her right leg uh, while she limped around her cell because the pain was so excruciating. She had been rushed twice to the emergency room prior to her trial last fall. And the DOJ's response to all of these things which were brought up in court today uh, was that one, the Alexandria Detention Center uh, should be able to address all of these things. And the judge concurred and said uh, she saw no reason why she could not be held in custody. Jean had requested specifically uh, house confinement so that she could obtain this surgery as well as a surgery on one of her eyes. Um, she's received uh, a surgery on the other eye and uh, the follow-up surgery has not been able to take place because of her confinement, because of her incarceration. So the judge sentenced her to 24 months, uh, nine of which have been served already, um, which leaves her at 15 months. Um, while she's been in prison, not only has uh, her conditions with hip, her hip surgery been uh, neglected, but she's also been suffering from extreme cold. Last fall, uh, she came down with pneumonia. She had previously tuberculosis. And because of the weakness of her lungs, uh, and the, the chill in the, the prison cell in which she was kept. Uh, she came down with pneumonia, was not treated for three weeks. She's 74 years old, and this very well could cause her death. Um, so the jail is, is guilty of gross neglect, um, and 
regarding all of these uh, accounts of medical maltreatment um, and me neglect of, of necessary medical care, uh, these issues have been raised uh, to Congress and LifeSite News through research has discovered that several of these instances would qualify for uh, under either international or uh, American definitions of torture, um, specifically those uh, that are detailed in the Nelson Nelson Mandela rules. And so we've brought this uh, to the attention of Congress and we have been assured that uh, they are looking into this. Uh, both houses have been notified. And so there will be further news regarding uh, Jean Marshall's conditions and the treatment that she is currently being denied and continues to be denied by the judge. The judge made the case today that because the doctor's letter in September said that the surgery was elective, for that reason, it was not urgent. Um, despite all the testimony of Jean Marshall um, for which they can obtain the documentation of the jail. And so LifeSite News will keep all of you updated uh, as the sentences continue coming down. We're awaiting one more today and then two more later in this month for Heather Idoni and Paulette Harlow. And so prayers are requested for uh, these DC uh, pro-lifers. They continue to serve time behind bars. They have uh, given a courageous witness uh, to the sanctity of life and uh, they are to be commended and supported. And all of the letters of support that were sent in to the judge on their behalf were noted in court. Um, and to, to her credit, she actually did read from some of them and highlighted the, uh, the good quality, the, the, the moral character of these defendants. Additionally, I should point out that uh, one of the defendants, Jonathan Darnell, is a decorated captain of the army. Um, he, he deployed twice to Iraq and uh, received numerous uh, commendations and awards and, and medals. And the judge mentioned that. And in his statement to the court today, um, it was particularly moving to hear him invoke his oath to uphold the Constitution, as well as his oath as a Christian to love, love his neighbor. And he hoped that his actions at the abortion clinic uh, in 2020 uh, fulfilled those two oaths. So these defendants that we're seeing are both uh, wonderful Americans and wonderful Christians. And the witness that they are giving is both a witness to the gospel um, as, as well as a witness to the sanctity of life. This is Louis Kanufke again reporting from Washington, D.C. And I look forward to seeing you next time. God bless.